the Joe Rogan experience. I'm a member of the deaf community, and I, don't, I think every deaf person would say that, that I, I like belong, but I also was the enemy. I was the hearing, and, and so you're- Then why do they think of the hearing as the enemy? Well, that is a complicated question, and it's because um, there has been a lot of enforced oppression on the deaf community from the, from the outside. The story of <clears throat> sign language is really fascinating. Um, 300 years ago, there was no sign language. There was, no, there, was, there was only the kind of sign, if you were born, 90% of deaf people are born into a hearing family, right? Uh, that's just the way genetics works. Like most of the time, you don't have deaf family members. And if you were born 350 years ago into one of those families, you just didn't have language. You weren't given the gift of language, which is the thing, I mean, think about how much language plays into your own life, Joe. Like yeah. speaking and think. Everything you know, every thought process you have is is mashed through the filter of language. Yeah. And in that situation, you'd be born into a family and you had zero language. It, you would have like a gesturing system that you'd created with your dad to be able to say like, pass the potatoes. And that right. was it. You couldn't so you, say how you feel. You couldn't say what you wanted to do. You couldn't even think about how you, I mean, you could think, I don't know. I mean, I wasn't, I, yeah. I've never experienced that. But language is the thing that unlocks reason. It's the thing that unlocks culture. Yeah. And people were stymied from that. But... If you were born lucky enough to have genetic deafness in your family so that you and your sibling were both user, both deaf, then the two of you sitting together could create language, a language of two, right? You would back and forth between two siblings create a, a family sign system that would enable the both of you learning from one another to create a language and enable you to reason and think and talk about how you feel, even if it was just with one person. communicate with the outside world. But at least you could communicate right. with yourself and with one other person. I mean, the difference between an isolated deaf person and a pair of siblings is the world. It's, mm. it's, it's freedom. It's everything. Right. So one day, a French p priest walks al uh, along and sees two deaf sisters signing back and forth to one another. And he goes, that's language. Prior to that, deaf people weren't even considered to be linguistic. They weren't even considered to be uh, capable of reason. But he goes, no, I know what that is. I'm looking at language. So he goes to these sisters. His name is the Abbe de Epe. And he says, teach me to sign. Somehow he tells them, like, you know, teach me these gestures to them. Teach me to sign. They teach him to sign. And he, his thing was he wanted them to take the catechism, right? That they, he wanted them to be able to go to heaven. He realized, oh, deaf people have, are, are linguistically capable, but they can't get into heaven unless they can take the catechism and confess their faith and take communion, right? Which, right, makes sense. If yeah. there is a God, that God wouldn't allow them into heaven based on the fact that they, they couldn't speak. <laughs> He's like, what am I, my hands are tied here, but I, so You have to say it. <laughs> so they teach him. They teach him, and he teaches them back French. And then he starts to gather the deaf people from around the world. Uh, I'm sorry, from around France. And he creates the first school for the deaf. Right? He teaches them French in sign. In sign. That's right. Whoa. Because French, because sign language and spoken language are not the same. A lot of people think that, right? That like, I speak American sign language, uh, but people think, oh, it's a translation of English. It's not. It's his complete own language, right? So... Oh, I did not know that. So much so that w the way that he would fundraise for this school is he would do like a traveling like road show where he would take his pr his star pupils around France and around Europe and they would be at a, like an exhibition hall and a person in the audience would ask a question. He would say, oh, Joe, do you have a question for the deaf person? And then you'd ask them some French question like, you know, what is what degree of suffering can be borne by man or how many creams is too many creams for a brie or whatever. And he would take your question, sign it to his star pupils and they would take a piece of chalk, walk up to the blackboard and write the answer in perfect French. And it, people lost their fucking minds. Like wow. they couldn't believe it like deaf people oh my god it like unlocked this whole conception of the deaf as like uh they can think they can reason oh they all they need is language to be free right mm. so all this whole network of deaf schools for the deaf started to spring up they would they sprung up in all over europe and they would uh, copy the the teaching methods of the the school for the deaf and um and and a guy from america came over right and he saw this system and he basically took their star pupil and one of the things was the deaf would teach each other so you would teach them sign and then they would become educated and then they would become a professor at this school and he took like the star professor uh, laurent clerk was his name um 
Thomas Gallaudet was the name of the American. He came over and he saw Laurent Clerc and he said, move to America with me and let's go do that. Let's go replicate this in America. So Thomas Gallaudet says, yes, they get on a boat. They sail to America. By the time they landed, Thomas Gallaudet knew rudimentary sign and Laurent Clerc, who was like a fucking genius, knew uh, basically had been taught English. And they set up the first school for the deaf in America. <laughs> they right? figured out English on a boat? He was a genius, like a real genius, like wow. a like an actual, like lucky enough to have been, you know, these circumstances mm -hmm. in history where like the perfect man at the perfect time, yes. like they come here, they set up this school here and they start to create American Sign Language. And they, they borrowed from these different worlds, right? They took French Sign Language as the base. Martha's Vineyard, uh, back then had this weird genetic anomaly on the island of Martha's Vineyard. This is like before it was just a place for Kennedys to fuck their mistresses. This was like back when it was a, a fishing town, a fishing island. Mm -hmm. There was some weird genetic thing that had happened where over the course of hundreds of years, one in 25 people on Martha's Vineyard was deaf. Whoa. And it was this very bizarre uh, kind of like, like almost... The, the equality that deaf people on Martha's Vineyard felt was almost like the opposite of like what uh, affirmative action is attempting to do, right? Affirmative action wants to correct a historic harm by, uh, by changing the playing field. This was an equity of everybody was the same because everybody on Martha's Vineyard knew uh, either was deaf, knew a deaf person, or was related to a deaf person. So everybody, hearing and non-hearing, signed on Martha's Vineyard. It was a, a sign system called uh, Martha's Vineyard Sign Language. They took some of that. They took the Plains Indian Sign Language, P-I-S-L it's called. You know that like gesture? Um, uh, you, you've seen it in like movies where the, the Native Americans will, will gesture to each other. Mm -hmm. And you think they present it as if it's like a war language so they don't have to make noise. But what it actually was, was all the tribes in uh, America spoke different languages. So they created this kind of uh, Esperanto of the tribes really? so that they could trade, they could do trade. And they, that was called Plains Indian Sign Language. And they took all that into like kind of bouillabaisse of a French Sign Language base, Martha's Vineyard Chaser, and Plains Indian sprinkled on top. And they created American Sign Language. And then a hundred years, two hundred years later, my mother was born deaf uh, in in Oakland, California, and she went to the California School for the Deaf, and she absorbed this language. My mother was thirteen when she went to the California School for the Deaf. She was in a, other uh, an oral school system. This is my long-winded way of telling you why deaf people have such a problem with hearing people. That language that she learned, she was she was in an oral school system. So almost as soon as the sign language system came out hearing people looked at it and go, we got to get rid of that. The one thing that unlocked their freedom, the one thing that unlocked their minds, hearing people saw it and said, we have to take that away from them. We have to make them more like us. By doing the sign, they're creating more Wakanda. They're creating an insular sort of closed circuit system of culture, right? And they're and weirdly, this was at a time in American history where those closed circuits of culture were really frowned upon. This, oh, like, they were frowning upon deaf people signing to each other. Deaf people signing to each other, Italians having their own newspapers, Chinese immigrants. Like every at that time in American history, the idea of creating like an immigrant subculture was was really frowned upon. Mm. And Alexander Graham Bell, whose parents were deaf like me, had a deaf wife. He became the champion of what was called the oral system. Um, and the oral system was well, let's not let's not allow them to sign. Let's teach them to speak. Let's make them like us. Let's make them talk normally and function normally. Let's make them like us. Mm. But it it was a crazy failure, because and it makes sense why, right? They like they can't hear the sounds. They can't hear the sounds. Oliver Sacks said teaching a deaf person. Uh, without sign is like teaching you Japanese from inside of a soundproof booth by holding up flashcards in Japanese and like putting a symbol next to it. It was like yeah. kind of doomed to failure. And then they went through this this 200 years reimposed darkness. There was a, there was a trial where all the hearing educators decided the deaf people wouldn't sign anymore. They fired all the deaf educators and they pushed them out and they created this oral system which really I mean it worked for some people. Some people but what it created was you had to be exceptional in order to be average in the deaf world. You know, you had to be a genius uh, in order to get that oral system to work for you because your natural mode of communication had been kind of stamped out. And then in about the, the 70s, deaf people started to like kind of rise up and say, fuck that, we're signing, this is who we are, this is our native language. And when I was born in 79, that was the, that was the world I was born into. And, and, and so from that 
two sisters on a fucking corner in, in a slum in Paris to that school, to Gallaudet, to a boat ride, to the Martha's Vineyard, to the California School to, for the Deaf, to my mother's hands, to my hands. That was the way that I acquired language. It was through this crazy historical journey. And that, to me... Is is the reason that I, that when I was born into the deaf community, there was so, there was so much distrust of the hearing world because they were like they stole from us the, the mm. one thing that gave us freedom. That makes sense. Wow, I did not know any of that stuff. That's incredible. What? How does someone get to be a fake sign language interpreter <laughs> and be on stage with Obama? Was it Obama? Oh, it's been multiple people, but just, one, there was one recently that happened. Yeah, but the you, Obama one was bananas because this guy was totally insane, and he was standing in front of Obama just making things up. I'll tell you how good he. Is. I want to see. Can I see it? The Obama guy. How bad the Obama yeah. guy is. Well, I think it's just gibberish. Dude, I think he's just the sign language version of gibberish. I, my life was going to appointments with my mother, and being tasked with the job of interpreting for my mom's medical appointments mm. for my mom it was like a, a non-consensual internship program right. like i i like her medical appointments and then i started to get in trouble and then the 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 subject of the meeting would be me it would be like a disciplinary meeting about so me. So you would have to explain what your mom was having a problem with with you. Or what the school system or what the Oakland po Police Department, what their problem with me was. Oh my God. And then you have to do this kind of like, this kind of interpretive dance where right. you, you're you're not, re you can't be like, oh, we think your son is awesome. He's a cool kid. We love him. Because then your mom, my mom's not stupid. She'd be like, all right, look let's this, see how bad so this, guy this guy is. Okay. Well, that's not Obama. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not the one. No, this is the guy. I remember that. Ah, uh, there the same is. Guy. It's just the same oh, guy. Oh, this was the, in it's at the Nelson Mandela uh, Memorial. Yeah. So right. check this dude out. <laughs> this video doesn't have him net with Obama. For okay, just show him that. by himself with that other gentleman. So what? What is he doing here, Moshe? <laughs> I, I am at a disadvantage, Joe, because I. This is South Africa. And right. I do not speak South African sign language, oh, but I remember so this guy. there is a, a South African sign language. I would, I would assume every system. You want to hear something crazy? It is so not a translation of English that uh, my mother no, would have a much harder time understanding a British sign, sign a signer than a French signer. Whoa! So it has nothing. It's divorced from English. Wow! Right? Ah, oh, this, this lady. Okay. So I can tell you that this woman is actually using sign language. This is actual sign language, but she is very bad at sign language. Is and that what it is? Yes. Those are real letters, and I. this is completely incomprehensible. It's 55 million is what she just said. I don't know what that is. Please. Announcement tonight. Handcuffs. She <laughs> Look, she waved her arms around like she was singing Jingle Bells. But that's not true, right? If she's doing some sign language. Well, she's a hustler, What, whatever this is. But I did, dude, I've been to so many appointments mm. with my mother with my mother, where I walk in and, the, and, and it's an emergency room appointment. And I go, you can leave. Just leave. Because you aren't qualified to do this. And this is fucking life or death for my mother. And you're here. You shouldn't have taken this fucking job. You should have known better than to take this job because this is an emergency room situation. So that's when I was an interpreter, the, the responsibility of that was like massive to me. I, I, I felt that so acutely because I'd lived through it in such a direct way. Right. I've told I've been an interpreter when people were told they were dying. I've been an interpreter oh when people were, were graduated from graduate school from like getting their doctorate all the way. I've been an interpreter where people were in court and it was literally the, the the degree to which I could sign accurately and faithfully was the difference between them going to prison and not going to prison. Like I've done all of that and the, that that weight is like super massive to me and I super important. Imagine. Yeah. And some funny shit has happened along the way too. I'm sure. Like some very strange situations. But how does the deaf community feel about people who get like implants and can hear again? So that's a, another complicated question. Um, I think, have you ever seen The Sound and the Fury? No. It's a fucking beautiful and fantastic documentary about cochlear implants and the deaf community. I mean, the thing is, deaf, the deaf community had a, an, 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 I, and I don't speak for the deaf community, obviously, but I can speak from my own experience. My mother has a cochlear implant. She got one. Because my mom was like, my mom's like an iconoclast and she's like, I'm not going to allow a taboo in deaf society to keep me from experiencing as much of life as I could possibly experience. Of course. But in general, especially at the beginning, deaf people hated the idea of a cochlear implant because they do not feel, and I think to some degree I agree with them, 
that deafness is a disability. They feel that that um, that what it is is it's a it, it's a culture. I mean, obviously they can't hear. That's a disability. But the true disability comes from the fact that communication barrier, and so to them. They see the cochlear implant as just another imperialist, now a robotic mechanism to make them hearing again.